Welcome back to part 2 of this tutorial. I now have my 5 rows of the cuff, alternatively the border of the hat. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. With the white here it looks like 6 rows, but don't worry, you will see that this white row will tip over to the back once I start with the Tunisian knit stitch and therefore it will be invisible on the outside. Then you can only see the wanted 5 rows. Alright, first I'm gonna crochet 2 rows in Tunisian knit stitch. This one is a stitch in our basic pattern. And here with the simple stitches we start the new round and with that the new pattern. For a Tunisian knit stitch I also insert into the vertical loop here. For a simple stitch I would go this way and get the yarn here. But for the knit stitch I also go underneath this transverse white bit here and pull the yarn through. So insert as usual, then go all the way through and pull the yarn through. That's the Tunisian knit stitch. Also, you can now see how the white line tipped over to the back and we're left with 5 visible rows. Now we keep going and just like in the previous 5 rows you collect loops on your hook until it's full and then start following with the white yarn or whatever color you're using. And once you did that you shift your stitches back and continue picking up stitches in black. So that stays the same. We unwind a bit of our black yarn. If you get the white yarn from here, always unwind the black yarn over to the other side. Saves you from a frustrating ball of tangled yarn. Alright, now shift all stitches over onto the other hook. and follow with the white yarn. Cast off two stitches together, same as always. Keep doing that for two whole rounds and then we'll continue with the zigzag pattern here. It's real easy without carrying any floats. See, this is the back side. I see you again after those two rounds in Tunisian knit stitch. Alright, I now finished the two rows in Tunisian knit stitch. I also moved my stitch marker up. And now we can begin with the zigzag pattern. This pattern has to be divisible by 8 stitch wise. You start here at the bottom tip and then every 8th stitch is a reverse stitch. The 7 stitches in between are Tunisian knit stitches. Let me show you the back on the inside. Here you can see the same pattern inverted. Here we have the 7 knit stitches and the 1 reverse stitch. Ok, so we start by doing 1 reverse stitch into the first of the round. then 7 knit stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then another reverse stitch. And like that you continue crocheting. The only thing left to do in this round is to increase 2 stitches so that the pattern adds up. I'm gonna do that now in my second set. 1, 2. Then 1 knit stitch. And now I insert 1 stitch lower. 
and work a knit stitch for this as well. I'm going to repeat that near the end of the round or somewhere in the middle. And then I increase 2 and the pattern adds up. You have 70 stitches down here. I need to get to 72. And with the head here, I have 62 stitches and need to get to 64. Okay, now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 knit stitches and 1 reverse stitch. You do that all the way around and follow with the white yarn as usual. I'm now just a couple of stitches before the end of the round. We have 5 knit stitches, 6, 7, and then I'm at the beginning of the next round. We continue as follows. Above the reverse stitch, we again crochet a reverse stitch, and also the following stitch. Now we only have 5 knit stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Before we again crochet 3 reverse stitches. The first into the stitch previous to the reverse stitch from before. The second on top of it. And the third into the stitch after. Then in turns, 5 knit stitches, 3 reverse. You're here. 1, 2, 3. And then 5 knit stitches. And like that, you keep going. You start the following round with 1 knit stitch, after that, 2 reverse stitches, then 3 knit stitches, and another 2 reverse stitches. The round after that, we begin with 2 knit stitches, then 2 reverse stitches, 1 knit stitch, 2 reverse stitches, and 1 more knit stitch. The following round starts with 3 knit stitches, then 3 reverse stitches, and another 2 knit stitches. And the last round starts with 4 knit stitches, 1 reverse stitch, and another 3 knit stitches. Repeat these sets for the corresponding rounds, and once you've done that, you just start with the first one again and repeat all 6 rounds of the pattern. Start again with 1 reverse stitch and 7 knit stitches. I repeated that 3 times. After that, we follow with another 2 rows of only knit stitches. And once that is done, we can start the cuff at the top. If you want to take a look at the pattern, I put a link in the description box below. You can find that in the files of our Wooly Hugs Facebook group. Just a picture of these six zigzag rows we just did. You keep going now, and we meet again for the cuff. Alright, I now did three of these zigzags, and then two additional rounds in Tunisian knit stitch. No reverse stitches, just like I started down here at the bottom. Okay, if you want to do the hat, this is the point where you need to continue with part 3 of this tutorial. In that, I will explain how to cast off the hat. If you're making the loop, you can stay here with me in part 2 and continue. This here is the middle of the back side. Now I want to split the loop in the middle of the front side. I have 72 stitches. Half of that is 36. Which means 1, 2, 3, 4 times 8 stitches. Plus another 4. I'm going to use another stitch marker. And this is going to be the middle of the front side. I want this to be the front. Oops. 
because here in the back we have the transition between rounds. And although it's barely visible, we want that to be in the back of the loop when we wear it. For that, I continue in Tunisian knit stitch. All the way up to the middle. We now work over the old transition between rounds. The new beginning of the round will be in the front middle. If you don't want to split it and keep working in rounds, you just ignore what I just said. You would then just continue right away with always one knit stitch and one reverse stitch in turns. With that, you crochet 5 rounds and decrease 2 stitches in the first one. Let me show you the decrease real quick. You just insert into 2 stitches at once and pull the yarn through. That's all there is to it. That's what all you guys do that want to continue in rounds. So you see, there are different ways to crochet this loop. There's no right or wrong, you decide how you want it. So now I'm at the front stitch. First let me follow with the brighter yarn. The color difference is not as visible anymore compared to when we started this loop with white. But exactly that gives it a real classy look. Alright, and now I'm going to cast this off all the way. Pull the yarn through all loops until only one loop is left. Usually, you leave two loops on the hook, but because I want to start the back and forth rows, cast them all off and then change to the longer cord. You'll see in a minute why I do that. That's what I like about this needle case, everything is in one place. We continue with the darker end. So unwind a couple of rounds. And now out of the first stitch I increase one. For that, we insert here into the stitch below and pick up one stitch. With that, once I split my work, it will split exactly in the middle here. That now was one stitch in the basic pattern, so a simple stitch. And after that, one reverse stitch. Simple, reverse, simple, reverse. Now I'm not going to decrease, unlike if I would have kept working in rounds. Because this cuff will split open, it's even better if we have two extra stitches plus the one we just increased. 
so this upper cuff will have three stitches more than the bottom one. Or the other way around, depending on whether you want to wear the split facing up or down. Again, you decide. Now I'm at the previous transition point between rounds, but I ignore that and keep crocheting. We work all the way around. That's why we need the longer cord, so that we can crochet all the way around with both hooks. Reverse. No, I just did one. So simple stitch, reverse, simple, reverse. Oh, where's my hook? Here. Couple more stitches, then I did the whole round. Reverse, simple, reverse, simple, reverse, simple, reverse. Simple. Reverse. Simple. Reverse. This stitch here warped a bit. That can happen because of the split. And we end with a basic stitch. As you remember, we also started with a simple stitch. And now for the special part. We continue working with a brighter color, but this time we did not shift our stitches onto the other hook. Instead, we get the yarn and pull it through the first loop. And then we go back and cast off all stitches as usual. That's the difference when you crochet back and forth. You work off all stitches. Endless possibilities with Tunisian crochet. So if you take pictures of your work and share them on Facebook, I'd be happy to look at what you created. The German hashtag is hashtag Tunesisch Häkeln überrascht, which translates to Tunisian crochet surprises. You can choose your own hashtag if you like. That's what I love in Tunisian crochet. You keep thinking, wow, what a wonderful effect, and you can try so much. Play with colors and patterns, 
work in rounds or back and forth, just be creative. I myself started really getting into Tunisian crochet about six years ago. I recorded this video in 2018, just in case somebody watches this tutorial 10 years from now and is wondering. I started getting into it at the end of 2012. And every time I spend some time crocheting Tunisian crochet patterns, it surprises me how much you can do. I think there's still no end in sight for a long time in the future. All right, I now cast it off all stitches. And now we continue again with a brighter yarn. So in this case, light gray. Another difference to the previous rows. With that, we now pick up the stitches. We start with one simple stitch in our basic pattern. Then one reverse stitch, simple stitch, Reverse, simple, reverse, and so on. And like that you keep going till the end of the row. We meet again as soon as you picked up all stitches. Now I'm at the end of the row. One more reverse stitch. And the only one left now is the border stitch. But because we start with a simple stitch after, we now increase one more stitch to make it even. Pick up that extra stitch out of this transverse loop here. And then insert into the border stitch. And pull the yarn through once more. We now work our way back with the darker yarn again. First, pull it through only one loop and then cast off two together, same as always. As we use the darker yarn, now we have to unwind a couple of rounds from the outside of our ball. There's a lot left over, so if you want to make your loop a bit wider, you can. Just add another 8 stitches. The yarn will be enough. You can even add pom poms or drawstrings at the top end just to use up all the yarn. It would be a shame to not use it all. In total, we crochet 5 rows for this cuff. If you want the cuff to really open up, you can always do more. One more way to use up the leftover yarn. The more material is around your neck, the warmer it will be, of course. Let me show you once more how to end this row and start the next. I think everything should be clear then. If not, you can just rewind this video and take another look at these rows. This here is our first loop. And then the first stitch is a Tunisian simple stitch. The second is a reverse stitch. And so on. Just continue like this. You can see how we created a vague stripe pattern. 
but it's totally different from the pattern down here with the high contrast. Makes for a really interesting color gradient throughout the whole thing. Alright, you continue until you have 5 rows, or however many you want to do. And the only thing left to show you is how to cast off the last row. First let me show you how to sew in the loose end to even out the edge. For that we need a needle and scissors, all included in my needle case. Take the end we started with, the black one, and go over into the next stitch. Then back into the first, and back again. After that, insert into the following stitch. Go back into the previous one, and again into this one. After that, we go to the inside and darn in the loose end as usual. Make a knot, and then pull the loose end through the stitches. Now cut it off. We darn in the white end as well. Go along the border and cut it off. And now this step here is even out. You can still see it, but it's neatly hidden and won't bother you anymore. Last but not least, we have to cast off the cuff at the top end. This is the rest of my yarn. I'm gonna cast off the cuff, and then seam half of it inwards, so that we'll have a nice collar. We start with an additional chain stitch. Then I insert into the first stitch and pull the yarn through both loops. And then reverse stitch, insert and pull through. Simple stitch, insert, pull through. And that's all there is to it. Slip stitches basically, if you know them from regular crochet. and we cast off with the pattern. So every reverse stitch gets a reverse cast off, and the simple stitches get a regular cast off. Always pull the yarn through both loops. Continue all the way around and try to work loosely so that the edge stays nice and stretchy. After that, I'm going to seam it inwards. You can do it the way you want. If you want this end to face up, you can also just leave it as it is. Totally up to you. That's it for the loop. I hope you had fun with this tutorial. If so, you're welcome to subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to know how to finish the matching hat, just meet me again in part 3 of this tutorial. Bye!